Hello, fellow fans of anatomy. Ooh, I'm getting really scruffy. Oh, well done me. Um, this week we're going to talk about this lump here. Uh, the thumb is incredibly important to us uh, and the muscles at the base of the thumb here, this, this lump is called the thenar eminence, is incredibly important to the functions of the hand, so is important to people. Um, we're going to look at the anatomy here, probably do a fair bit of detail I reckon, but there are only three muscles. Ooh, or are there four? Ooh, controversial. Um, the thenar eminence is the lump. We might also talk about the thenar compartment. There's a muscle here that gets included, in, it gets included in some sources and not others. But we'll look at the muscles. We'll talk about the movements. The innovation is easy, and that's one of the reasons why this is important. Uh, and that sounds about it, right? Our primary aims will be identification and movements, our secondary aims will be detail where the muscles attach to, right? Um, so the muscles here are largely innervated by the median nerve. The median nerve runs through the forearm, dips through the carpal tunnel, deep to the connective tissue here in the wrist to get into the hand. The ulnar nerve over on this side also plays a role in some of these. But what this means for us is that if we know the anatomy of the three muscles in the thenar eminence and this other one here, the fourth one, then we, and if we know the movements the muscles create, we can test those movements, test the muscle, test the nervous innervation and work out what's going on um, in somebody that might have some pathology. First of all, we need to revise the movements of the thumb. The fingers are easier, so we have flexion of the fingers, so flexion, extension, abduction, adduction of the fingers, and the thumb is considered to be on a plane at 90 degrees to the fingers, which means that flexion of the thumb is this, extension of the thumb is this, so that's flexion, extension, <laughs> uh, and then we have abduction, so that's the abducted thumb, so abduction, adduction, so that's flexion, sorry, that's extension, extension, abduction, extension, abduction, does that make sense? So abduction, abduction, adduction, abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. Because the muscles are very sensibly named, right? The thumb is called the pollex. Muscles that move the thumb get called something, something pollicis or pollicis. And the three muscles of the thenar eminence are flexor pollicis brevis, brevis meaning short, abductor pollicis brevis, and opponens pollicis. The other muscle is adductor pollicis, here. So you see the movements are crucial to naming the muscles. The other thing we need to consider are the bones. We're going to need to name some of these. So uh, these are the metacarpal bones here, metacarpals across here. Uh, the bones of the wrist of the carpals and when I talk about the detail later, um, I kind of expect you to know some of the carpal bones, but metacarpals and then phalanges forming the actual digits. So the fingers have three phalanges, the thumb has two phalanges. So what we're primarily gonna be thinking about is how the first metacarpal, that is the metacarpal bone of the thumb, and the first proximal and distal phalanges, or rather really the proximal phalanx, how that moves in relation to the wrist. And we have some rotation and stuff going on. Okay, so metacarpal phalanx. If I grab a model, so right hand still, here's the thumb. So you can see that the, the muscles of the phenar eminence are covering that first metacarpal bone and they're running from the wrist. So this is the flexor retinaculum. So all of these muscles tend to be attached to the flexor retinaculum 
and the carpal bones, the bones of the wrist, and then run through to the first metacarpal, the metacarpal of the thumb, or to the proximal first phalanx, the, first, the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And if we look superficially, so if we just take the skin off, the first muscle that we see, this muscle that's most superficial, is abductor pollicis brevis. Brevis means that there's a longus, there's going to be a long version. So this superficial muscle then, this is the muscle that is going to abduct the thumb. It's going to pull the thumb that away. At the base of the thumb, we have the trapezium and the scaphoid bone. And they've got some little lumps on here, some tubercles. Whenever you see lumps on bones, that means that muscles are attaching there usually if they're not articulating surfaces. So it's, it's, it's largely the tubercles on the trapezium and scaphoid that these muscles of the thenar eminence plus that connective tissue of the flexor retinaculum, that's where the muscles are attaching to and arising from. That's their point of origin. The point of insertion is the bit that moves. So it's running from the flexor retinaculum out to the base and what we might call the lateral base or the radial base. This is the radial side because that's the side the radial bone is on. The base of the first phalanx, the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb. So what it can do is it can help with abduction of the thumb, but it can also help with rotation of that proximal phalanx around in this movement, which is opposition. Opposition refers to the ability of uh, some primates to bring the thumb into opposition with the fingers. And this is a somewhat complex movement. It's not just flexion, there is also some rotation of the bones going on here. So abductor pollicis brevis is the most superficial muscle. It helps with abduction. Can you see how by contracting and getting shorter, it pulls the proximal phalanx towards the flexor retinaculum and towards the carpal bones, so giving, aiding in abduction, and it will also help rotation of that proximal phalanx towards the little finger in opposition. Now, flexor pollicis brevis, by the name you can kind of work out where it is, because if that is flexion, it's gonna to need to be over this side, isn't it, to help pull the thumb across the hand. So that's what we see here. This is flexor pollicis brevis, again running from that origin site out to the base of the proximal phalanx of the first digit, the thumb. And can you see how if that muscle gets shorter, it's going to pull the thumb that away. So what it's doing is it's flexing the thumb at this joint down here, which is the carpo-metacarpal joint, the joint between the carpal bone and the metacarpal bone. And it's also flexing the thumb at the metacarpophalangeal joint. That is the joint between the metacarpal bone and the proximal phalanx bone, giving flexion of the thumb. Trick here is it's often described as having two bellies or two heads, um, superficial and deep, lateral and medial. Um, I think the deep head uh, doesn't occur in some people. Um, it doesn't really have much effect functionally, um, but the, um, the medial head, so if we think that the, the ulna side is over here, the, the head on this side is described as being innervated by a branch of the ulnar nerve, whereas the, 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 the lateral or radial side is innervated by um, a recurrent branch of the median nerve. But you probably get a sense then of how flexor pollicis brevis is going to also play a role in opposition. So in fact, if we take off, if I said most superficially we saw abductor pollicis brevis, if we remove abductor pollicis brevis, then we see opponens pollicis. So it's deep to those guys. Flexor pollicis brevis is medial, opponens pollicis is in here. Okay, so opponens pollicis, well this looks quite different. We can see that it's arising from the same site as the other muscles, but look, 
it's wrapping around. So the bone under here, I said, was the first metacarpal bone, the metacarpal bone of the thumb. So in fact, while these fibers are coming from the same sites as the other muscles, it's, it's, going, it's running around the first metacarpal bone. So what that's going to do then is it can, it can f help flex that first metacarpal bone at the carpo-metacarpal joint, but also because it's wrapping around that bone, it can ro rotate it. So it can medially rotate the metacarpal bone to bring the thumb into opposition and give us that really important precision grip that we kind of take for granted. So that's opponent's pollicis. And that's it. Those are the three muscles of the thenar eminence. We'll go on to this one in a moment. But um, generally they're, they're innervated by the median nerve, which means that median nerve injury in the upper limb will often lead to wasting, a noticeable wasting of this muscle mass in the thumb. Um, also, you can then test these movements, flexion of the thumb, opposition of the thumb, um, abduction of the thumb against resistance to give you an idea of the power of each muscle compared to the other side and the functioning of the median nerve, right? So, that's useful, but that's not it with grip and the thumb. So this muscle here, well, if that was abduction, then this movement is adduction and it's adducting the thumb. So this muscle in here, there's a nice, beautiful triangular muscle in there, is adductor pollicis. And adduction of the thumb is really important to you. Now on the model, I have to dissect away a little bit take away some of those superficial tendons, and now we can see a ductor pollicis. This is what I mean by this triangular or fan-shaped muscle. It has two heads, an oblique head and a transverse head. Um, but can you see that this bone here is the one, two, third metacarpal bone, and the bone underneath it is the second metacarpal bone. So the oblique head of adductor pollicis is coming from the bases of the second and third metacarpal bones and the capitate bone and probably other carpal bones, so running up obliquely, whereas the transverse head is running from the shaft of the third metacarpal bone and probably coming from some of the other carpal bones nearby, but it's running across in that fan to, here's the thumb, to the base of the proximal phalanx of the thumb, the proximal first phalanx on the, on the medial side or the, the ulnar side we might say, which then gives us the movement of adduction, from abduction to adduction. And you can see that muscle when you, you abduct. So that's adductor pollicis. Now, oh, we can see actually, look, there's the nerve innervating it, running across. Where's it coming from? This is the ulnar nerve over here. So the ulnar nerve is running across to innervate adductor pollicis. So we normally say that the median nerve innervates the muscles of the thenar eminence. These four muscles might be considered part or within the thenar compartment. And the difference is, is that the adductor pollicis muscle is innervated by the ulnar nerve, whereas those other muscles, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, opponens pollicis, are innervated by the median nerve. I mentioned the ulnar nerve of one of the heads, but generally median nerve. How are you doing after all that? It's a lot of detail, but hands, hands are important to us. So that adductor pollicis muscle if you think that, you know, whenever we're gripping things, we're using the thumb and we're bringing the thumb back to the hand, that adductor pollicis muscle then is really, really important in making any sort of powerful grip. Ow. <laughs> the muscles of the thenar eminence, they're innervated by the median nerve, um, abduction, flexion, opposition, so they're short muscles, abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis, and then adductor pollicis 
is the more powerful muscle in here, which is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Thenar eminence, thenar compartment, whatever you want to call it, these muscles are really important to us. And we, like most of our body, we take them for granted, don't we? Okay, well, I hope that was useful for somebody. Um, see you guys next week.